All right, it looks like the participation number is starting to level off. Thank you very much, Mr. Sabo. In that case, good morning, everyone. I'm very pleased to welcome all of you to this meeting of the California Privacy Protection Agency Board. It is February 3rd, 2023 at 10.04 a.m. My name is Jennifer Urban, and I'm the chairperson of the board. Before we get started with the substance of the meeting, as usual, I have some logistical announcements and reminders for everybody. First, I would like to please ask everyone in the panel to check that your microphone is muted when you're not speaking. Um, for everyone, please note that this meeting is being recorded and that it will be run according to the Bagley Keene Open Meeting Act, which is required by law. After each agenda item, there will be an opportunity for questions and discussion by board members. And I will also ask for public comment on each agenda item. Each speaker will be limited to three minutes per agenda item. If you wish to speak on an item and you're using the Zoom webinar, please use the raise your hand function, which is in the reaction feature at the bottom of your Zoom screen. If you wish to speak on an item and you're joining by phone, you can press star nine on your phone to show the moderator that you are raising your hand. Our moderator will call your name when it is your turn and request that you unmute yourself or comment at that time. Those using the webinar can use the unmute feature and those dialing in by phone can press star six to unmute. When your comment is completed, the moderator will mute you. Now, I mentioned um, uh, that the moderator would call you by name. It is helpful if you identify yourself, but this is entirely voluntary, and you can input a pseudonym when you log into the meeting. The board welcomes public comment on the, all items on the agenda, and it is the board's intent to ask for public comment prior to the board voting on any agenda item. If for some reason I forget to ask for public comment on any agenda item and you wish to speak on that item, please let us know by using the raise your hand functions and the moderator will recognize you. Um, once again, please do be aware that each speaker will be limited to three minutes per agenda item for public comments. Um, relatedly, I would like to remind everyone of the rules of the road under Bagley Keene. Both board members and members of the public may only discuss items on the agenda for today when those items are up for discussion. So if you are speaking on an agenda item, both board members and members of the public must contain their comments to that agenda item. We will take breaks as needed. Um, and if we take a break uh, and you have walked away from the webinar, you'll see that we've put up a little sign to let you know that. Um, and if we are able to predict, we'll say when we'll be back. My many thanks to all of the board members for their service today and to everyone working to make the meeting possible. I'd especially like to thank the team supporting us today, Mr. Philip Laird, the agency's general counsel, who is our meeting counsel, and um, will be present presenting on a couple of items today. Mr. Ashkan Sultani, who is here in his capacity as our executive director, and Ms. Lisa Kim, who's our brand new senior privacy counsel and advisor for the CPPA, and I'll say a little bit more about that later. I would also like to thank and welcome our moderator, Mr. Kevin Sabo, and ask him now to please conduct the roll call. Okay, board member De La Torre. Present. De La Torre present, board member Lay. Present. Lay present, board member McTaggart. Here. McTaggart present, and Chair Urban. Present. Urban present, you have four present and no absence. Thank you very much, Mr. Saba. The board has established a quorum. I would like to let the board members know that we will be taking a roll call vote on any action items. Now for everyone's um, ability to follow what we're doing today, if you look at your agenda, we're going to take agenda item number three, consideration of a resolution to recognize the service of our former member, board member Chris Thompson next. We'll circle back to agenda item number two after that. Mr. Thompson, it's wonderful to see you today. Um, and we will now move to agenda item number three, um, which is this resolution to recognize his distinguished service. Um, and that is in your meeting materials packet today. Um, I just like to say briefly how fortunate we've been to have Mr. Thompson's expertise on the board as one of the founding members um, of the board who was with us until December. We've moved through some startup development stages and now we're in the building stage. 
And I personally have especially valued Mr. Thompson's expertise in organizations and his focus on building the agency with a strong culture and a strong organizational foundation with special attention to our values and how those are transmitted throughout the organization. Um, as I said in December, but I'm just still sort of bummed about it. I was really looking forward, Mr. Thompson, to your insight as we move into our strategic planning. Um, and oh, well, you know, um, it's too bad that we won't get your insight, but I think that you've given us some very um, good thought to work with as we move into that. And I've really valued his even handedness and his thoughtfulness um, in our rulemaking and other work. Um, so as he as you go off and continue your work for Los Angelinos as the chief of staff for Mayor Bass, um, my deepest thanks to you on behalf of Californians and, and on the agency. And today I'm pleased to present for the board's consideration, a draft resolution honoring and expressing our appreciation to Mr. Thompson for his contributions. If you will please turn your attention to the draft resolution under agenda item number three, um, I will read it out um, so that we can deliberate. Resolution in recognition and appreciation of distinguished service by J. Christopher Thompson. Whereas Mr. J. Christopher Thompson, as a founding member of the California Privacy Protection Agency Board, played a key role in creating the first agency vested with full administrative authority to implement and enforce the California Consumer Privacy Act. And whereas Mr. Thompson's work to establish the California Privacy Protection Agency with a strong organizational foundation has helped ensure the agency will be proactive, nimble, and um, steadfast in protecting Californians' consumer privacy rights for many years to come. And whereas Mr. Thompson provided invaluable strategic assistance, guidance to board, fellow board members and agency staff as the agency entered its first rulemaking process to implement California's flagship consumer privacy law, and Whereas Mr. Thompson helped lead the agency's initial work to promote public awareness and understanding of the risks, rules, responsibilities, safeguards, and rights in relation to the collection, use, sale, and disclosure of personal information. And whereas Mr. Thompson's colleagues have deeply appreciated his informed and measured approach, his strategic mind, his strong work ethic, and the humor and professionalism he demonstrated as a member of the agency board, and whereas Mr. Thompson recently departed the agency board to dedicate himself fully to his new role as chief of staff for Los Angeles Mayor Karen Bass, and whereas Mr. Thompson's colleagues on the agency board are confident that Mr. Thompson will continue to benefit California through his commitment to public service and to the state. Therefore, be it resolved that we, his colleagues on the agency board, extend our deepest appreciation for Mr. J. Christopher Thompson's service to the state and to the protection of Californians consumer privacy. We look forward to continuing to work with Mr. Thompson and benefiting from his insight and guidance for years to come. So thank you, Chris. And are there any questions or comments from board members? Ms. De La Torre and then Mr. Lay. I just want to quickly echo the words of the uh, chairperson, Irvin. Um, the humor, professionalism experience that Mr. Thompson brought to his role with the agency were deeply appreciated for by everybody. I think, especially by me, I had the opportunity to share with him in a subcommittee and get to know him a little better. And um, I have many, many opportunities to learn, really learn from his deep experience in government. So um, we um, very much appreciate what you have done for Californians. And I personally very much appreciate how I have been able to learn from my interactions with you and wish you the best on your, uh, on your new role. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. De La Torre. Mr. Lay? Yeah, I, I'd like to echo what uh, Ms. De La Torre said. You know, I've learned quite a bit from you, um, Mr. Thompson. Uh, you know, appreciate your counsel and your guidance as part of our outreach campaigns, you know, your strategic insights and how we responded to different challenges uh, at the agency. Um, and, you know, thank you most of all for, you know, the humor that you brought to 
um, you know, our conversations. And yeah, I, I wish you the best of luck in your new role. You know, um, Los Angeles is uh, lucky to have you. Thanks so much, Mr. Lay. Mr. McTaggart? Thank you. Um, you know, you and I had uh, limited interactions because I joined the board uh, recently, but I just want to say again how uh, grateful I am for your service to uh, the people of California, not just in this role, but in your in your next role. How lucky I think that the people of Los Angeles are. And uh, I think, as I said before, I'm personally excited because I think you will bring to the highest levels of the government of what is by all intent, you know, it's a city state effectively. Um, the importance of privacy. And I, I look forward to uh, having that entity allied with this cause as well. So thank you for your work. Thank you so much, Mr. McTaggart. Um, Mr. Thompson, we really appreciate all your service. Um, is there anything you'd like to say before we take public comment? Uh, I just want to say thank you. I mean, I'm really, I'm honored and humbled that, that you're, you all are doing this. Um, it was real. It was an honor to serve with you all. The opportunity to start up this agency was was pretty unique and had had challenges. But you know, we all I, I feel like we collectively rose to the occasion to to move this agency forward and get it established and and promulgate rules while building an agency and, and the the culture and and direction, strategic direction of the of the agency. I love public service. I've worked in government for a long time. Obviously, I'm working in government again. And working with the, these people on this board and the incredibly dedicated staff renews my faith in, in public service and, and in government. And you know, for people to understand how much dedication and hard work is put into this effort by you know, unpaid board members and the, the public servants on the staff who are dedicated to this mission, should really, I, I wish people could see what, what we saw um, of the work that went into the work and care and diligence of, that has gone into standing up this agency and starting to, to um, implement the, the statute through these regulations. It really is, it, it is an encouraging piece of, of public service by dedicated public servants. So thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Thompson. Um, with that, I'm going to ask for a motion on the table so the public knows what we are thinking about when I ask them for public comment. May I have a motion to adopt the resolution in recognition and appreciation of distinguished service by J. Christopher Thompson? I so move. Thank you, Ms. De La Torre. May I have a second? I second. Thank you, Mr. Lay. Um, with that, we have a motion on the table. Mr. Sabo, could you please let us know if there's public comment? Yes, we are on agenda item three, resolution to dis to recognize distinguished service by former board member J. Christopher Thompson. If you would like to make a comment, please raise your hand using Zoom's raise hand feature or by pressing star nine if you're joining us by phone today. Your name will be called when it's your turn and you'll be invited to unmute yourself. Those dialing in by phone can press star six to unmute. You will have three minutes to make your comment. This is for agenda item three the resolution recognizing service by former board member Thompson. Again, use your raise hand feature on Zoom or press star nine if you're joining by phone. Madam Chair, I'm not seeing any hands raised at this time. All right, thank you very much. In that case, Mr. Saba, will you please perform the roll call vote? Yes, the motion is to uh, adopt the resolution as stated by the chair. Uh, board member De La Torre? Aye. aye. De La Torre, aye. Board member Lay? Aye. Lay, aye. Board member McTaggart? Aye. McTaggart, aye. Chair Urban? Aye. Urban, aye. There are four ayes and no nays. Thank you very much, members of the board. The resolution is adopted unanimously. Mr. Thompson, um, that is basically the compensation we can give you. Um, and um, I hope it is very heartfelt. Um, I will say that. Thank you very much for your service. We miss you. We will continue to miss you, but we look forward to future interactions and, and really appreciate everything that you've given to the board.
And with that, um, everyone, we will move back, circle back to agenda item number two, which is the chairperson's update. Um, so once again, welcome everybody to this meeting. I have just a couple of updates. Um, first, as we have always attendees who haven't um, attended every meeting, I will uh, briefly situate today's meeting within the board's current work so that it's clear what our purpose is today and what's coming up. Uh, our overall focus continues to have two main components, the work necessary to build out the agency and build out the agency, excuse me, <clears throat> and completing our first substantial rulemaking package. We've been spending the bulk of some meetings on rulemaking and others on discussions of the administrative and structural tasks. Today's meeting is closely focused on the rulemaking. We've adopted a streamlined agenda for today to facilitate our discussion of two key rulemaking issues. Considering for approval the rulemaking package the agency has been developing with public input and considering a preliminary request for comment in preparation for some additional rulemaking. I anticipate that our next meeting will focus more on building tasks, including some administrative policy and oversight matters following from our discussions in our December public meeting and previous meetings. Um, so for example, we will likely take up discussions on the agency budget, strategic planning process, and some processes and procedures for board and agency work. Uh, so I just have a couple of updates before we move into our rulemaking discussion for today. Um, first, as I alluded to um, when I was opening the meeting, I am thrilled to announce that Ms. Lisa Kim has joined the CPPA as our Senior Privacy Counsel and Advisor. Ms. Kim comes to us from the California Department of Justice, where she was in a Deputy Attorney General focused on consumer privacy. We have been very fortunate already to have her service as one of the DOJ counsel who have supported the CPPA as we grow and especially fortunate for her work on the rulemaking we are discussing today. Now we are exceptionally fortunate to have her join the legal team here at the CPPA. We welcome you to the agency, Ms. Kim, and we are so happy to have you become part of our team. Um, secondly, I would also like to draw everyone's attention to a couple of new job postings for senior staff. Um, the agency this week posted positions for an assistant chief counsel and for a Deputy Director of Enforcement. The Deputy Director of Enforcement will lead and manage enforcement activities and will oversee the enforcement division of the agency. Please check out these positions and apply or forward them to promising candidates. You can find the postings along with postings for other open positions on our website under Career Opportunities. Um, so if you go to www.cppa.ca.gov, and look for the career opportunities link, you can um, uh, check out the career opportunities page. Finally, I will offer my periodic reminder to everyone about our email lists. If you're interested in the boards and agencies work, you can sign up to receive announcements of board meetings. You can also sign up specifically to receive communications about the rulemaking process. Um, so to do that, again, go to www.cppa.ca.gov and you can click on join our mailing lists on the front page, which will take you to a page with instructions and information about those lists. Those are my updates. Any questions or comments from board members? Great. Oh, sorry, Mr. Lay. Uh, I, I just want to, you know, congratulate the agency uh, for being able to, you know, hire on uh, Ms. Lisa Kim. Uh, I'm, I'm very happy to have her on staff and, uh, you know, excited. Agreed. Thank you, Mr. Lay. All right. Um, if there aren't other board comments or questions at this time, Mr. Sabo, would you mind letting us know if there's any public comment on this agenda item? You're on mute, Mr. Sabo. Rookie mistake. I apologize. Uh, we are on agenda item two, chairperson's update. Uh, if you'd like to make a comment, please raise your hand using Zoom's raise hand feature or by pressing star nine on your phone if you're joining us by phone this morning. Again, this is agenda item two, chairperson's update. If you'd like to make a comment, please raise your hand using Zoom's raised hand feature or by pressing star nine on your phone. Madam Chair, I'm not seeing any hands raised at this time. 
Thank you very much, Mr. Saba. Um, uh, once again, delighted to welcome you officially, Ms. Kim. Um, and with that, we will now move to agenda item number four. Agenda item number four is titled Discussion and Possible Action Regarding Proposed Regulations, Sections 7000 to 7304, to implement, interpret, and make specific the California Consumer Privacy Act of 2018, as amended by the California Privacy Rights Act of 2020, including possible adoption or modification of the text. Today, the board will be discussing staff's proposed final rulemaking package for section 7000 to 7033, excuse me, 7304, and will be considering finally approving the text for submission to the Office of Administrative Law. This is a potentially big day, um, and I'm quite excited. The rulemaking process in California is robust, lengthy, and favors public participation and transparency, especially when it's combined with the board's involvement under the Bagley Keen Open Meeting Act. To locate today's discussion and the board's work in previous meetings, I will remind everyone of how this works and the steps taken in the rulemaking process up to this point. Now, I know that some of you are familiar with this and have heard it before, but for those of you who are already familiar with it, please bear with me for those who are not as familiar, because the process does diverge from a lot of people's common understanding of rulemaking, and it can be confusing otherwise. Um, so um, rulemaking in California agencies follows the California Administrative Procedures Act, um, and for uh, agencies run by boards like ours, also the Bagley Keene Open Meeting Act. Um, and we follow this basic um, process. So I'll just sketch out how we got here. First, the board with counsel and staff as they were hired, and thanks again to everyone who helped us out while well, we were mostly just a board, created a structure for developing the regulations in compliance with the Bagley Keene Open Meeting Act. Um, the regulations subcommittee, which was Ms. De La Torre and myself, um, prepared a preliminary initial invitation for comments to gather information to support our understanding in advance of the rulemaking and developed some rulemaking subcommittees, which we proposed to the board um, and were accepted. These included the update of CCPA rules subcommittee, which I was a member of along with Ms. Angela Sierra, um, who has since left the board, and the new CPRA rules subcommittee, which is comprised of Ms. De La Torre and Mr. Lay. This allowed the board to work on substance more than a board would normally need to do in order to provide, um, to, to, um, uh, to make progress um, on the process and gather information while we were building the staff. We also had a rulemaking process subcommittee with Ms. De La Torre and Mr. Thompson um, to advise on that. Um, so we worked um, as the board with some counsel from OAG and others as we hired staff, and we put out a, that preliminary um, uh, request for initial invitation for comments in um, November, or no, October of 2021, um, and then held informational sessions with experts and stakeholder sessions. Um, I think it was a total of like five days of those in March and early April of 2022. So that gave us a strong background um, and understanding um, those preliminary activities. And with that background in place, the board put together an initial proposed rulemaking package, excuse me, the agency. At that point, we did have some staff. At this point, the formal rulemaking process under California law began. When an agency in California writes regulations to implement a statute, it must follow the California APA, which requires a formal process to ensure that the public has input. Once a rulemaking package is ready, it is published with a notice of proposed action and some explanatory materials, most notably the initial statement of reasons or ASOR, which gives background on the agency's reasoning. This went out on July 8th, 2022. Then there is a period of at least 45 days during which the public can submit written comments to the agency on the proposed rulemaking package. We received written comments during the period ending August 23rd, 2022. There is usually a hearing, which we did hit, hold. We held hearings on August 25th and 20, excuse me, 24th and 25th. The agency then considers all the comments and whether to make modifications in response to those comments. If it makes any substantial changes in response, then there will be another time period for written comments at least 15 pay, days. 
In our case, staff considered public comments and put together proposed modifications to the regulations, which the board considered on October 28th and 29th of 2022. And in that meeting, the board decided on some additional changes, approved most of the staff's changes, and approved the package for the 15-day comment period. Staff implemented the additional changes and gathered for their public comment in November. Then staff considered all the comments, prepared the final rulemaking package, including responses to each comment, um, and um, has now published um, a lot of those materials or those materials for the meeting today. Should the board approve the package today, then it will go to the Office of Administrative Law for review and approval. There is um, a little bit of um, extra process because of how Bagley Keen interacts with the APA process. And I should say staff has prepared an FAQ on our website under regulations um, to help everyone understand this if they get confused. Compared to, um, for example, the federal rulemaking process, which is often more familiar, many agencies in California have this additional layer of process. The California Privacy Protection Agency is governed by this board. Under our implementing statute, the board holds the agency's rulemaking authority. So we must approve commencing the formal rulemaking process, any suggested modifications, and the final rules. The board, in turn, is governed by the Bagley Keen Open Meeting Act, which requires that all of our discussions are considered in public meetings noticed at least 10 calendar days in advance, and that any materials distributed to the board for the meeting are also available to the public. In practice, that means the public gets to see draft regulations, suggested modifications, and proposed final package, and as well gets to listen to and comment on our discussions in advance of those steps being taken under the APA. So this is different from what many regulatory advocates are familiar with, especially for federal rulemaking, but also for rulemaking in California by agencies not governed by boards. In most situations, the first time the public sees rules or modifications is when they're published to begin the formal rulemaking process or can, can, to continue it. In our case, however, for example, the initial package was ready in May of 2022, but it couldn't be released for public comment until the board was able to discuss and improve it in June. So it was out um, uh, uh, for, public, for, pub, for the public to be able to uh, look at in May, um, and then uh, the board had to discuss it in public and it was um, released um, in July. Same with the modifications, um, the board had to first discuss any of those and approve them before it could go through the next stage of the formal process. Today, we are discussing agency staff's council, excuse me, staff council's recommendations to the board to adopt the final rulemaking package and approve it for submission to OAL. Again, all those materials are available. They've been available on our website. So accordingly, when you put these two together, the APA and Bagley Keen, the process takes longer, but it provides additional transparency and lots of opportunity for public input. So that's where we are, that's how it works. Um, and um, I believe that um, the plan is for Mr. Laird and Ms. Kim um, to explain a little bit about the process going forward and introduce the materials in the package. Um, and then um, the board will discuss the package and we will discuss um, our proposed um, uh, next step that we want to take um, with regards to the package. So with that, um, I will hang things over to Mr. Laird and Ms. Kim. I'd really like to thank them and their team for taking so much care to consider the comments and for preparing these materials for the board and the public. Um, they do support our discussion, of course, but they also provide that extra measure of transparency and notice for the public. And anyone who looks at them can see that it was an extraordinary amount of care, thought, and work that went into it. So thank you very much for this, and I will hand it over to you. Thank you, Chair Urban, and good morning to the members of the board. Um, before th I turn things over to Ms. Kim, I'd like to take a moment to go over a few points about where we are with this package and then the next steps that will occur. Um, as Chair Urban described in her summary, we are now at the point in the rulemaking process where the board may vote to formally approve the proposed regulations for submis submission to the Office of Administrative Law, which I may refer to as OAL, just to shorten that a little bit. but. Uh, and, and staff is in fact recommending that the board do so today. The, the text of the rules are substantively unchanged from the version the board reviewed during the October 28th to 29th meeting. Uh, as a reminder, in that meeting, board members raised and staff did note 
some additional topics and propose guidance on future changes. Uh, as discussed, staff intends to bring those proposals back before the board for consideration once the current package is finalized and in effect. And I'll note that this really is common practice for all state agencies, since there are often some issues, particularly in a complex rulemaking, that require additional analysis, well, as well as items that arise over time. And this really is the nature of rulemaking if we as regulators are staying attentive and nimble to an evolving industry practices and consumer protections. So in any event, we look forward to revisiting those topics at a future meeting. Now, in terms of next steps with this package, if the board approves these proposed regulations today, staff will work quickly to finalize and print all required documentation and anticipates filing the final package with the Office of Administrative Law within about two weeks. Uh, that would then kick off OAL's review period, which is 30 business days, which I say business days, I, I mean that it usually averages out to about 45 calendar days, um, during which they have uh, to complete their review of the package. Um, towards the end of their review, the Office of Administrative Law will notify us if they intend to approve or disapprove the rulemaking package for any reason. Um, while I know our team has done an outstanding job preparing a rulemaking file that meets every requirement under the Administrative Procedures Act, the truth is, nearly all rulemaking files, and especially those that are as large and complex as ours, um, will have some issues that OAL identifies as needing revision. Sometimes these issues arise in supporting documentation, such as the final statement of reasons, and can be re revised by staff during that 30 day, 30 business day review window that OAL, ha OAL has. Um, other issues, however, such as those existing in the text of the regulation, can only be revised with an additional notice of modified text and 15 day public comment period, uh, which in our case would also need to be authorized and directed by the board members. Um, for these reasons, we request today that if making a motion to approve the regulations, the board authorize staff to do the following. To take all steps necessary to complete the rulemaking process, including filing of the final package with OAL, to allow staff to amend any documents within the rulemaking package other than the text, as necessary to ensure clarity and accuracy and to address any issues that OAL might raise to our attention. Also, we would request that the executive director and staff be given the authority to make any non-substantive changes, such as for grammar or misspelled terms to the proposed regulations themselves. And finally, we would ask that the board authorize staff to withdraw the rulemaking file in part or in whole from consideration by OAL, OAL if we determine the legal risks associated with disapproval by OAL would warrant further consideration by the board. Now, to, to be clear, under that final authorization I just described, one possible scenario is that OAL could identify a handful of regulations within the package requiring re revision. And in that case, OAL could permit us to withdraw only those regulations while allowing the remainder of the package to proceed to approval. Um, so given the board's interest in completing these regulations as soon as possible, we think it is important for staff to maintain that level of flexibility just so that we can maximize our ability to complete the rulemaking quickly. Um, now, I know I just covered a lot, so I'll be happy to answer any questions from board members about the process I just described in a moment. However, first, I would like to turn the floor to Ms. Kim, who I'd like to kind of echo the sentiments shared earlier. I am absolutely thrilled as part of our, our legal division team as well. Um, and I'll turn to Ms. Kim to summarize all that's occurred since our October 22, 22 meeting um, and to explain the supporting materials that were provided today in connection with this agenda item. So, Ms. Kim. Thank you, Mr. Laird. And I, I just also want to say thank you um, for the warm welcome. I am very honored to be part of the agency and I look forward to working with the board as well as the, uh, the entire agency staff to um, make this the best agency out there. <laughs> um, so as Mr. Laird stated, the final proposed regulations before the board have has not substantively changed since the board's meeting on October 28th and 29th when the board approved the modifications for an additional 15-day comment period. During the 15-day comment period, we received around 50 comment letters comprising of around 450 pages, and staff carefully considered all the comments received and determined that no further changes to the proposed regulations were necessary at this time in light of the board's previous direction. To note, many of the comments reiterated previous comments that were submitted during the 45-day comment period and or they supported the regulations themselves. Accordingly, we pre began preparing materials necessary for OAL to review the package 
and drafts of the substantive documents were included in the meeting materials for today to assist the board in making its final determination regarding the regulations. And to, to explain what has been included. So first, um, the final text of the proposed regulations has been added to the meeting materials. Now, this is the text of the proposed regulations that the board would be submitting to OAL if they so approve today. They are compared to the current regulations existing and in effect now. So blue reflects the additions and red uh, reflects the strikeouts for deletions. Um, please note that it's only two colors instead of the rainbow version <laughs> that showed the different changes made throughout the entire rulemaking process. This is the one that just compares to what's existing and what we want the final product to look like. Um, what we've also included was the draft final statement of reasons. Now the final statement of reasons, or we call it FSOR for short, is a part of the rulemaking package that provides a narrative explanation of any changes made from the original version of the regulations that were submitted at the start of the regulations process or the rulemaking process. It updates the initial statement of reasons, which explains the initial version of the regulations. So together, the ISOR and the FSOR explain the purpose and benefit for each regulation, including why the regulation is necessary. Now, what was also included were the draft FSOR appendices A and C. Now, these are the draft summaries and responses to all the comments that we received during the 45-day and the 15-day comment periods. The two appendices are pretty lengthy. They're together, they comprise about 50, 500 pages. Um, but this is reflective of the fact that we received a total of around 150 comment letters uh, comprising of over 1,500 pages during the 45 day and 15 day comment periods combined, as well as they include the two days of public hearings. And so you'll see in the 45 day chart or the appendix A that there's notations um, identifying the specific comment as well as the specific um, speaker during an oral um, during the public hearings. Um, these these charts summarize and respond to all the substantive comments raised. We consolidated the comments where possible, and in accordance with the APA. Whenever we did not accept the comment, we explained why we did not accept the comment in the response. Finally, we also included the Form 399 and its addendum. Um, this is basically the economic analysis of the impact of the regulations. Revisions were made to it because some of the proposed regulations were deleted, and so the necessary changes had to have been made. And these two documents were prepared by the economists that we had hired to assist us in doing the economic analysis. So those were the materials included. And as um, Mr. Laird mentioned earlier, we are both here and happy to answer any questions about these materials or next steps in the process. Thank you so much, Ms. Kim. Um, I, and I have some thoughts, but I will wait to see if there are any comments or questions from other members of the board. We could all be slightly glazed from reviewing all of your amazing work. So, um, Ms. De La Torre? Um, yes, I'm not sure if um, there was an explanation as to the form 399 and the findings in that form, or maybe there was and I missed it. it, it could we get a little bit of um, understanding of, of that form, how it was prepared? I Wait, think the sorry. narrative is in the materials for today. So beyond the like the form, there's a, there's a narrative from the economists explaining their reasoning for today. No, no, yes. I understand. I, I'm just saying a, a reference to the fact that the document is there and why it's there. Oh, I see. Sorry. Yep. Ms. Kim? Okay. Sure. Um, the Form 399 is a required form that is, um, it's required by the APA and basically is an analysis of the economic impact that the proposed regulations have. Um, we prepared that form or, you know, our economists helped us prepare that form. And we also included something called the addendum to the form 399. And that just goes into a greater explanation of the, the conclusions that were made and included in the form 399. Um, they detail um, the specific different um, regulations that we identified as having, a, uh, as having an economic impact. 
And I wanted to just, you know, clarify because I think there's been some confusion um, reflected, especially in the comments um, regarding the, the economic analysis. The, the requirement for us is to look at the economic impact specifically of the regulation itself and not of the law. So there are many, you know, economic impact that the law, you know, the CCPA or the CPRA amendments to the CCPA had um, with regard to how it would affect the business and how much it would cost. But that is not what is um, required of us when we propose the regulations. What we are looking at is what, in addition to the basic uh, basic baseline, um, would be the cost of the regulations. And so that baseline is basically you know, what is currently existing in law is already a cost that we don't have to take into consideration. What is required by statute is a cost that we do not have to take into consideration with the regulation. What we do is whatever is directly related to the um, cost that the regulation in it in itself would have um, on businesses. That's and as well as consumers, that is what we, um, the form 399 as well as its addendum explains. And so I, you know, that seems to be a, a little bit of a point of confusion among the public, but I hope that especially our responses to the um, economic analysis comments that we have included in the 45 day and the 15 day comment charts um, or the appendices will help explain. Thank you, Ms. Kim. And I think it's, I thank you for that good explanation and Ms. De La Torre for asking the question as well, because I do think if one is just looking from the outside, it can sometimes be a little bit difficult to tell. Another um, feature I noticed in the comments when I was going through them is that fairly regularly, um, someone would express a desire, an argument for us to change something that's actually in the statute, um, which of course we, we cannot do. I say, of course, but you know that may not be necessarily intuitive and it's totally understandable, but just you know, like we cannot change the statute um, we need to isolate the cost of the regulations themselves um, away from the statute itself. So I think it's just really helpful um, to everyone to have a little bit of that explanation set out. Ms. De La Torre, does that answer your question? Was there more? No, that's exactly what I was asking for. Thank you so much, Ms. Kim. Thank you, Ms. De La Torre. Ms. McTag or, sorry, Mr. McTaggart? Thanks. Um, so a couple of things. First of all, uh, um, lower this hand here. Um, I just want to congratulate the team on an extraordinary amount of work. I mean, this reading this thing, um, I can just imagine the late nights uh, getting this ready for this board meeting. Um, and, you know, Ms. Kim, I'm so uh, personally gratified you joined the agency. You've been uh, doing these regulations since the beginning. CCPA. And so it's wonderful to have the continuity and to have your expertise and wisdom as you go out and write these regulations for the first time. It's quite something to see an agency do this because most other agencies already have the regulations and they're kind of tweaking them here and there and you guys are creating them from scratch. Uh, it's an extraordinary amount of work and I'm, I'm, I'm excited to hopefully adopt these today and, uh, and move on. And uh, so I just want to say thank you for the work, all of you. Uh, I know it's been just a mountain. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McTaggart. Any further comments from the board? Yes, Mr. Lay. Yeah, um, again, you know, echo the thanks to staff, you know, reading this, you know, 167 pages of, of comments and on top of, you know, the actual comments themselves, must have taken quite a bit of time. Um, with regards to, you, you mentioned, Mr. Laird mentioned that we'd be bringing up future items, um, for rulemaking. And I'm just curious, do we as a board need to highlight any of those that we pulled out from those comments or is it already all in a list that you all are tracking? Great question, um, Mr. Lay. We, we did take careful notes of sort of all the board's kind of suggestions and ideas and topics that they'd like to bring up for future items. And so we, we will be prepared to discuss those when this rulemaking is complete. Okay. And I also just, I meant also from the ones in, you know, in, in this, um, you know, F's, the, the summaries and responses to the 15-day comments and the 45-day comments, there were other items that, you know, the board members didn't mention. I was just curious if there's like a running list of, you know, whenever you said future analysis on this issue is required, um, you know, for, for some, you know, I meant there's there's a lot of questions around like employee benefits and, 
whether things are disruptive screens or dark patterns. Um, so I, I was just going to say that is is that also in the list, or is it just like the the board mentioned items? I, I think our plan was to certainly prioritize the board mentioned items, but I think we have cataloged all the feedback we've received, and and especially uh, those items that we've indicated will will require sort of further analysis. Miss Kim, if you have anything to add on top of that, but um, I think it's fair to say staff's taking quick careful note of all of those comments. I would yes. just say that items that we brought up in the October meeting, um, I know were cataloged carefully and we read them back out. So they're in the transcript and in the notes and everything um, for staff to be able to easily pick those up. Yes, I just wanted to say we do have a running list and um, the two that you mentioned just now are already included in that list. So um, it's a long list. That being said, you know, we will we'll get back to you all. Thank you, Ms. Kim. Uh, Mr. McTaggart. Thank you. Um, just on this topic, I'm just kind of wondering as, uh, as we evolve uh, and move forward, is it appropriate, uh, Madam Chair, to have an agenda item kind of just uh, at every meeting, I guess it could be with other business where any board member or member of the public could bring up a request to, you know, put another rule in the queue to be examined or another issue to be examined. Because I, I just think that the, the nature of this is that this is the first, you know, this is the, the major uh, uh, piece of it, but inevitably there are going to be things where we have different ways of, of thinking about it. So I, I, I kind of think this is going to be a long work in progress. Um, so that's just my my question. Great, thank you, Mr. McTaggart. And I really want to all just amplify what you were saying at the end about it being a work in progress, which doesn't mean that these rules aren't completed themselves, but the nature of rulemaking is to be responsive to the public's needs and to businesses' needs and our statute explicitly um, exhorts us to do that. So by our the very nature of the agency's work and our work as a board, um, we will be regularly considering um, items for potential rulemaking or considering rulemaking. So I really appreciate that you highlighted that. That's another thing that I think it's, it's just important for us to um, keep front of mind and for everybody to understand as we're meeting. In terms of your process question, with your indulgence, um, I would like to um, discuss with Mr. Laird um, in between meetings um, what the, like all the different sort of possibilities, um, just so I don't misspeak here in the meeting. And so we have time to think it through. Um, certainly board members can contact staff at any time um, and let them know that something has occurred to them, that they're thinking of something. In terms of bringing up things in board meetings, as I think you were alluding to, Mr. McTaggart, and why you were asking, of course, we have to stick to the properly noticed public agenda so that we are not, you know, bringing up some topic that is important to someone in the public without the public knowing um, that that is what we were going to discuss. There is certainly um, the opportunity for agendas that have an agenda item for um, collecting future agenda items, which is most meetings. We don't have one today because we're very focused on the rulemaking items. That is an opportunity to bring something up for um, discussion in a future board meeting, for example. Um, and there may be other options, maybe something along the lines of what you suggested. I just want to be sure that I um, Mr. Laird and I can fully talk about it so that I can give you the best answer um, when we when we come back um, for our next meeting, if that makes sense. And in the interim, staff will um, uh, board members can always reach out to staff with 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 topics that um, have come up. Ms. De La Torre, thank you. I just wanted to take a moment to remind everybody that we created a process subcommittee, and one of the things that we um, asked from that subcommittee was to identify and propose to the board a way to do rulemaking moving forward. So I think some of this conversation actually should happen within the context of that subcommittee because it was created for that purpose um, and um, is currently inactive, but I know that we have it in our uh, future agenda items, um, the idea of 
appointing a new member so that we can reactivate that um, subcommittee. So, so long as the subcommittee is still standing, I think that is the right forum for the conversation. And then the subcommittee should bring proposals to the board on how to um, better do this uh, moving forward. Um, so that was one thing that I wanted to mention. I uh, also want to echo, echo um, the words of Mr. McTaggart, uh, Mr. Lee, and uh, Chair Urban in terms of um, just appreciating the work that the staff has put into these regulations. Um, I have been working in uh, privacy and data protection for many years. Before I joined the board, I thought I was familiar with the APA process and lo and behold, that was not the case. It's just, it's just amazing. And so um, it's, I think I'm underappreciated sometimes um, by outsiders and we might be perceived as, as being slow, but I do not believe that there is another agency in California. I mean, I'm, I don't have the data here, but I, I will very much doubt that there's another agency out there in California that has put the package that we have put forward within the time limits that we have done it and with the staff constraints that we had. So that uh, is really goes to just highlight the um, professionalism and the dedication of everybody in the staff that has dedicated time to this. Um, that said, I wanted to... Um, remind the board that in our prior meeting, I talked about my preference in terms of um, approving this package, which will have been to pull out one of the rules that has received a lot of comments, that's 7002. I'm not gonna go over my um, the, my prior comments on why that, that would be my preferred position. I understand that there is no support from the rest of the board to do so. And I'm ready to move this package forward as I see that there's an advantage to um, get it approved. And we're talking about the idea of bringing things back to the board to improve on uh, or um, ad adopt um, more, um, Apologies. Um, yes, um, have have a more robust conversation among ourselves. I think we're prioritizing timing, and that that that's the right thing to prioritize right now. But I look forward to having that conversation with the back um, with the board. Um, there is a number of topics that might not have been in the list that maybe we all have in our minds or might come up, and we we should think about how we can better work with the agency to bring those. Um, as much as I appreciate the idea of bringing things back, particularly, you know, I have, there's one provision that um, I had more comments around. I also have awareness of the work that goes into implementing these rules uh, for the organizations that have to implement them. And when we touch a rule, when we change a rule, we should be mindful of that work um, so I, I think that we have to balance the discussions, which might be something that we want to have happen. As Mr. McTaggart was mentioning in every board meeting, we we have to decide that, and then the process of how that gets enacted. You know, how many packages are we going to put out? Um, that's a burden on our staff, and that's a burden on the organizations that have to implement, and it is also potentially for consumers confusing if we if we change our rules. So my final thought is that uh, for 7002, one of the things, the only thing that I wanna highlight here is we're setting up a secondary use test that is a little different from, from other tests that have been enacted in Colorado, Europe, et cetera. I, I brought that um, to the prior meeting and I'm, I'm confident that we can rethink those in future meetings. Um, we're also bringing forward a secondary use uh, rule or test that doesn't have carve outs, clear carve outs for journalistic research, archiving, and statistical uses of data. All of those four uses of data tend to be secondary uses of data. Europe has carve outs for them. I don't think that we wanna be more restrictive 
than Europe. So that's something that I'm hoping that we will be able to look into in the future. And in terms of enforcement, we should consider um, while the, the rules are the way they, they are proposed right now, um, research shouldn't be an afterthought when we think about regulations. And um, there's a lot of different challenges that we are facing from global warming to gun control to COVID that require vast amounts of data to be used to solve for. And with um, California being a state that prides itself in innovation, um, I hope that this board, when we go back and reconsider the rules, um, has awareness and considers those uses that are in the public interest uh, to ensure that we continue to be the engine of innovation that we have always been. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. De La Troy. Um, any other comments or questions from other board members? Moment. Okay, in that case, um, uh, I just had a, a, a few thoughts in line with what other board members have said. Uh, I wanted to, before I suggest a motion, to pause for a moment um, and not fully, there is no way to fully, um, but somewhat formally acknowledge and express gratitude for the tremendous work that has gone into this rulemaking package by everyone involved. Proposition 24 created the agency at the end of 2020. My fellow board members and I were appointed in March of 2021 and began our work with our first meeting in June of 2021. From the very beginning, we had the benefit of guidance and support from another number of other state agencies. For example, Business Consumer Services and Housing Agency, the Department of Consumer Affairs, and the Office of the Attorney General. Mr. Laird, for example, served as our first meeting counsel and provided crucial information about board process and rulemaking before he joined us um, from another agency. The tech team at the Department of Consumer Affairs created our website and our mailing lists, which maybe sounds quotidian, but it provided a way for us to release our preliminary request for comment and to receive comments from the public in return. And of course, the expert attorneys at the Office of the Attorney General, including Ms. Kim, providing the council to put the package together. Fortunately, in October of 2021, the board hired our executive director, Ashkan Sultani, who has seen the, overseen the building of an exceptional in-house legal team and support staff. And it's their incredibly hard work, long hours, and thoughtful attention to our statute and to public comment that you can see partially. And I'm just going to say partially, you know, Mr. McTaggart mentioned the long nights. I don't know that all those nights actually ended. Um, I, um, it, you know, really exceptionally um, committed work on the part um, of the team. Um, and this sort of broader team and our growing internal legal team, they have just been tireless in considering all the information we've gathered, working with the board subcommittees, working with other agency staff to carefully craft that draft regulatory text, and then to carefully consider all the public comments on that text. They're peerless in their expertise. They have experience with consumer law, privacy law, and specifically the California Consumer Privacy Act and the existing regulations as well as California administrative law. Um, we've mentioned Ms. Kim's expertise, but it's worth mentioning again, also supervising Deputy Attorney General Stacey Schesser at the AG's office and the rest of the team there. Um, Mr. Sultani, um, our own agency counsel, including Mr. Laird, our acting general counsel, Brian Souble, staff counsel, including Neela Fersheik, Kristen Anderson, Nelson Richards, and, and others, so many others, and many other people at the agency. This was really all hands. Um, Mr. Sabo's team and others helped produce all of these materials um, so that we could be fully informed and fully transparent. They're exceptional and I want to thank them. I'd also like to thank, thank, take a moment to thank my fellow board members, including our prior colleagues on the board, Angela Sierra and Chris Thompson. This board is both intrepid and dedicated. Um, it's not everyone, as Mr. Thompson suggested earlier, who would be willing to volunteer 
um, to build an agency uh, that was brand new and had substantial and important responsibilities for the people of California uh, and for businesses in, who serve the people in California. Without staff yet in place, um, the board still found a way to make substantial progress on this rulemaking, to engage the public um, actively, uh, and to work in subcommittees to get started on and support staff in developing the sub substance of what is a really complex rulemaking package. This is well beyond the call of duty for members of boards usually, and it is incredibly appreciated. And last, but very much not least, I wanna thank the public for its attention to the board's work and its thoughtful and robust participation in the rulemaking process. Those 1,500 pages of comments were exceptionally important to the staffs and the board's understanding of um, the rules and how they might affect um, all different affected parties and what people needed and what they were asking for. Um, and, um, you know, of course, just really critical to the endeavor. And I know a lot of work um, on the part of everyone who has participated so far. So I really want to thank um, everyone who has participated in our meetings, who's written comments, who joined hearings, um, what have you. Um, every every um, every comment has been valuable. Um, so thank you um, to everyone. The board will next consider public comments. And as is usually my practice, I will um, suggest a motion to put on the table. So. Um, everyone is informed as to what we're thinking of, um, if they would like to take that into account in their public comment. Um, I will ask for a motion to approve and adopt the regulations as modified, to direct staff to take all steps necessary to complete the rulemaking process, including the filing of the final rulemaking package with the Office of Administrative Law, the amendment of any documents within the rulemaking package, other than the text of the rules, as necessary to ensure clarity, accuracy, and compliance with the Administrative Procedures Act, to authorize the executive director to make any non-substantive changes to the proposed regulations, and finally, as Mr. Laird explained earlier, to further authorize staff to withdraw the rulemaking file in whole or in part from consideration by the Office of Administrative Law at any time, if in, the, if in their opinion the legal risks associated with disapproval of these regulations would warrant further consideration from the board. Um, so I believe those are the sort of components um, of what we need to decide today. And with that, I will ask Mr. Sabo um, to request public comment. We are on agenda item four in relation to the proposed regulations. If you'd like to make a comment at this time, please raise your hand using Zoom's raise hand feature or by pressing star nine on your phone. Your name will be called when it's your turn and you'll be invited to unmute yourself. Those dialing in by phone can press star six to unmute. You will have three minutes to make your comment and I will let you know when your three minutes are up. So at this time, if you'd like to speak on agenda item four in relation to the proposed regulations, uh, again, please raise your hand at this time using Zoom's raised hand feature or pressing star nine on your phone. First, we have Ray Kitty. I'm going to unmute you at this time. Thank you. Uh, I just wanted to say I would encourage the um, the agency and the board to consider ways in which their web page can be a more substantive aid for the public to figure out um, a lot of these issues. Um, as somebody who is not an owner of an information company and not on the legal staff of such, such a company, I found it difficult to add a substantive comment to the list. For example, um, you all mentioned the running list of issues. Can this be on the web page for the public to view? Uh, can there be a place for the public to share concerns? Uh, those being, um, after some time and perhaps redacted, shared with the public so that this can be a resource, not just for the rulemaking process, but also a place where the public can find out how their privacy concerns are being addressed and if it could be not quite a technically sophisticated method of communication that would be great a lot of people with some privacy concerns are not lawyers and aren't tied into this process as well as they could be and so 
I ask if the agency could think on ways to provide information, provide help, and receive information from the public at large, oriented to the public at large. Thank you. Thank you very much for the comment. Um, Mr. Sabo, is there further public comment? Yes, next we have Zach S. Zach S, whenever you're ready, you can go ahead and unmute yourself and begin your three minutes. Hi, uh, I was just wondering if it would be possible for the CPPA staff to provide just a list of the non-material changes that were made between the previous version of the proposed regulations released in November and the text that is either finalized here or as modified with the grammatical changes um, just from a, pr a practitioner standpoint, it would be useful to see whatever changes are actually there because as released when you ch got rid of the rainbow, it made it really difficult for document comparison. Chair Irvin, you're, you're um, on mute. Oh, I was thanking the commenter for the comment. Um, I'm fond of the rainbow myself. Is there further public comment? Again, we're on agenda item four with respect to the proposed final regulations. If you'd like to make a comment, please raise your hand using Zoom's raise hand feature or by pressing star nine on your phone. This is for agenda item four with respect to the final regulations. Bruce Wick, I will unmute you at this time. And again, you have three minutes. Please proceed when ready. Bruce Swick, you've been unmuted if you'd like to speak at this time. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Uh, the regulations, as far as I understand it, will apply to some um, employers brand new this year. Those who, for instance, contractors who work only with general contractors have no consumer information, but have employee information. And th these people are having to um, for the first time, deal with the Privacy Act and all the requirements. And I appreciate all the work you've all done from the ground up on developing an agency and regulations. Will there be, as this goes forward, a practical set of guidelines, guidance, FAQs for those employers who are over $25 million in revenue, don't have consumer um, information but now have to deal with employee information that is not exempted going forward that would be really helpful to those employers uh if we could do something like that thank you thank you very much for the comment Bruce Wick is there further public comment Mr. Saba if you'd like to make a comment please raise your hand using Zoom's raised hand feature by pressing star nine on your phone this is in regard to agenda item four with respect to the proposed final regulations. Again, please raise your hand using Zoom's raised hand feature or by pressing star nine on your phone. Madam Chair, I'm not seeing further hands at this time. Thank you, Mr. Sabo. And thank you to all of the folks who um, offered comments just now. The board having considered public comments to the proposed modifications that were noticed on November 3rd, 2022, may I now have the following motion to adopt and approve the regulations as modified, to direct staff to take all steps necessary to complete the rulemaking process, including the filing of the final rulemaking package with the Office of Administrative Law, the amendment of any documents within the rulemaking package, other than the text of the rules as necessary to ensure clarity, accuracy, and compliance with the Administrative Procedures Act, to authorize the executive director to make non-substantive changes to the proposed regulations, and to further authorize staff to withdraw the rulemaking file in whole or in part from consideration by the Office of Administrative Law at any time, if in their opinion, the legal risks associated with disapproval of these regulations warrant further consideration by the board. 
I so move. Thank you, Mr. Lay. May I have a second? I second. Thank you, Mr. McTaggart. I have a motion and a second. Mr. Sabo, would you please conduct the roll call vote? Yes, the motion is to approve as stated by the chair. Board member De La Torre? Aye. De La Torre, aye. Board member Lay? Aye. Lay, aye. Board member McTaggart? Aye. McTaggart, aye. Chair Urban? Aye. Urban, aye. Madam Chair, you have four ayes and no noes. Thank you very much, Mr. Sabo, and thank you very much to the board members, staff, and the public for everything that they've put into this rulemaking package. Um, I very much look forward to, um, uh, to seeing it proceed through the Office of Administrative Law um, and appreciate that we have had a unanimous vote and the motion is adopted. Mr. Laird, um, please um, follow the procedures necessary um, to implement the uh, direction of the board today. Very excited to reach this milestone um, in the board's work and in the agency's work um, on behalf of Californians. So thank you to everybody. I want to use my little um, celebration icon on Zoom, but I'm just not sure. You know, it won't it won't translate to the transcript. So I will only I'll speak my celebration um, uh, instead. And we'll move now to agenda item number five, if everyone is all right to continue, but I do wanna take a quick check to see if anybody needs a break. Nope, okay, not seeing a need for a break. Let's move to agenda item number five. Agenda item number five is titled Preliminary Rulemaking Activities for New Rules on Risk Assessments, Cybersecurity Audits, and Automated Decision-Making. In its December 16th, 2022 meeting, the board heard a presentation from the new CPRA Rules Advisory Subcommittee on its advice to begin preliminary information gathering on the set of potential rulemaking topics named in the agenda item today. These topics are new from the California to the California Consumer Privacy Act with amendments from the California Privacy Rights Act of 2020, the ballot initiative, the new CPRA Rules Subcommittee is Ms. De La Torre and Mr. Lay, and they advise putting out a preliminary invitation for comment to gather information on these topics um, in advance of a potential rulemaking on them. The board agreed with the subcommittee's advice, and staff have now prepared a draft preliminary invitation for comment for the board to consider. Uh, this is in your materials under agenda item number five. If you would please turn your attention to that. I believe Mr. Laird is going to present it today. I will hand it over to any of Mr. Ms. De La Torre and Mr. Lay and Mr. Laird, whoever it should be. Um, uh, and before I do that though, I'd like to offer my many thanks again to Mr. Lay and Ms. De La Torre for their work on this and to the staff for putting together the proposed preliminary invitation for comment. So I believe it's Mr. Laird? Yes. Wonderful, thank you. <laughs> yes, thank yes. You. Thank, thank you, Chair Urban. Um, so I'd like to take a moment. I, I know we've been doing a lot of gratitude, but I would like to take a moment to also thank the folks on our legal team, especially um, Ms. Nilla for Shake and Kristen Anderson for the tremendous work they've done um, to support this invitation for preliminary comments and to support the subcommittee. Um, as Chair Urban described, the document that has been provided as part of today's meeting materials is an update to the draft questions presented by the new rules subcommittee at last December's meeting, and it incorporates a handful of revisions and additions suggested by board members since that meeting. Additionally, the draft invitation generally frames the request for comments in a manner that is consistent with the agency's first invitation for preliminary comments that was referred to earlier back in 2021. Um, at this point, staff is recommending that the board approve this draft invitation uh, to be released to the public for to open it up for comments. Um, and but as a reminder, though, I want to just note that this will not actually commence a formal rulemaking process under the APA, but instead will serve as an opportunity for preliminary stakeholder input and information gathering to help inform the agency's development of draft regulations, um, specifically on the subjects of cybersecurity audits, risk assessments, and automated decision making. Um, so, uh, generally at this point, I'm happy to answer any questions you may have about this, uh, draft of the document that's been prepared for today's meeting. Um, but otherwise I, I'm happy to just turn it over to the board for any discussion you have about this, but would, would recommend we, we proceed with the, uh, preliminary rulemaking. Thank you, Mr. Laird. I think this is a wonderfully comprehensive and carefully put together, um, set of questions 
And I really appreciate staff's additional work uh, once they picked it up from the subcommittee in December uh, and the framing that staff have added. So I think this is a very um, helpful um, next step uh, and uh, support it. Uh, any other comments from board members? Yes, Mr. Lay. Yeah, um, yeah, I also want to thank staff for preparing this this list of questions and, you know, for the public and, and those listening, I think the, these questions reflect, you know, the, the, the seriousness with which we're approaching um, this issue of automated decision making risk assessments and cybersecurity audits. And in particular, you know, there's just so many different contexts in which um, these, these, you know, automated decision systems, for examples, are used. And you know the board um, and our subcommittee really would like to understand how regulations should be shaped by these different contexts and different um, you know impacts. Uh, so we really appreciate uh, and, and thank you in advance to the public for for submitting comment. It'll be very helpful for us in, in refining and, and creating regulations that uh, can work throughout different contexts and uses of um, these these tools. Thank you, Mr. Lay, Ms. Taylor uh, I just want to echo the words of Mr. Lay. The um, uh, comments from the public are extremely helpful in this process of rulemaking, and they're going to be particularly helpful for um, the section of the rules that deals with automated decision making, um, audits, data protection impact assessments, because um, we do not currently have those in any form in our rules, and, and they are not. Um, they're not delineated in the statute. So um, I encourage anybody that has an interest in this subject to um, bring their comments early to us, um, take advantage of this opportunity to share with us their thoughts about how we should ensure that Californians are uh, adequately protected in the context of all of these um, regulations that we're considering. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Delatore. Further comments or questions from board members? Uh, Mr. Sabo, would you please ask if there's any public comment? Yes, members of the public, this is in regards to agenda item five, the preliminary rulemaking item. If you would like to speak on this item, please use the Zoom's raise hand feature or press star nine if you are joining us by phone today. And thank you, Mr. Sabo. And I will ask you, members of the public, please do raise your hand if you um, think you might like to comment. But I realized that I didn't um, put together a potential motion just so everyone has the same information um, uh, in case anyone wanted to react to it. Um, so the motion that I will request would be to direct staff to release to the public an invitation for preliminary comments that's in substantially the form of the draft document a review today in connection with this agenda item. Um, and invite the public to respond, basically. So um, I just wanted to be sure that I had that out there um, and we'll look forward to any public comment. So again, this is in regards to agenda item five, the preliminary rulemaking item. If you'd like to make a comment, please raise your hand using Zoom's raise hand feature or by pressing star nine if you're joining by phone. Madam Chair, I am not seeing any hands raised at this time. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Sabo. Um, in that case, um, may I have a motion to direct staff to release to the public an invitation for preliminary comments that is substantially in the form of the draft document reviewed today in connection with this agenda item and inviting the public to respond with written comments within a 45-day period as soon as is technically feasible? I so move. Thank you, Ms. De La Torre. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Seconded. Thank you, Mr. McTaggart. Mr. Sabo, I have a motion and a second on this motion. Would you please conduct the roll call vote? Yes. The motion is that which was stated by the chair with regards to the preliminary rulemaking item. Board Member De La Torre? Aye. De La Torre, aye. Board Member Lay? Aye. Lay, aye. Board Member McTaggart? Aye. McTaggart, aye. Chair Urban? Aye. Urban aye. Madam Chair, you have four aye votes and no no votes. 
Thank you very much. The motion passes with a vote of four to zero. Thank you very much again to the subcommittee, to the staff, um, and, and to the board. And I think we will all look forward to um, public input through this process. Our final agenda item today is number six, agenda uh, adjournment. Before we move to that, um, I believe that our executive director would like to um, say a word of thanks. Thank you, Chair Urban. And indeed, I just wanna thank the board for their careful consideration and support of these draft rules. And I also wanna express my sincere gratitude for the tremendous effort that staff have put in to getting this package ready for the board's consideration. I know we've joked about um, long nights and overnighters, but in reality, staff have consistently gone above and beyond to get these materials available to the board with enough time to review. And if you recall, a year ago around this time, the agency had perhaps a handful of people and was entirely reliant on outside help to support our rulemaking and even these meetings. And so I'm incredibly proud of the progress we've made and the service we've been able to, to provide. You know, really thank you all and thank the board and staff for getting us to this important um, milestone. Thank you, Mr. Sultani. I can't think of a better way uh, to finish off and move to our final uh, item on the agenda, which is adjournment. Um, once again, thanks to everyone, board members, staff, and members of the public for all of your contribu contributions to the meeting today and to all of the board's work. May I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? I so move. Thank you, Mr. Lay. Is there a second? I second. Thank you, Ms. De La Torre. Uh, Mr. Sabo, we have a motion and a second, and the board should now vote. Um, would you please perform the roll call vote? Yes, the motion is on to adjourn. Board member De La Torre. Aye. De La Torre, aye. Board member Lay. Aye. Lay, aye. Board member McTaggart. Aye. McTaggart, aye. Chair Urban. Aye. Urban, aye. Madam Chair, you have four votes, four aye votes, and no no votes. Thank you very much. The motion has been approved by a vote of four to zero. And with that, this meeting of the California Privacy Protection Agency Board stands adjourned. Thank you very much, everyone. <laughs>